my name is Jason. I'm the founder of FreeCPAPAdvice.com and uh, the forum, FreeCPAPAdvice.com forward slash forum. If you haven't already, please join um, and also please subscribe to my channel as well as like the channel because when you like the channel and you like the videos, it makes me happy. And when I'm happy, you're happy. Now that's not true. I don't know if you're happy. Um, all right, so something I want to tackle because it's been coming up a lot is auto SV. I'm gonna do a couple different videos on this. This is gonna be the first one and it has to do with uh, ASV settings. Now if you don't know what ASV is, it's auto servo ventilation. Um, it's a BiPAP, it's a type of BiPAP. So you have CPAP, uh, you have APAP, which is like uh, auto titrating CPAP. So you'll have, you know, CPAP is just one pressure um, APAP will start off at one pressure and then if you're kind of struggling, it'll over a very, not a long period of time, but longer comparatively speaking to ASV, it'll slowly increase and it'll stay at this pressure for a while. Then it'll kind of go up and, you know, if you need it at this pressure, but it doesn't do it breath to breath. It does it much slower. Um, then we have BiPAP. Now BiPAP has, you know, a pressure here and a pressure here. The pressure up here is called IPAP, inspiratory positive air pressure. When you breathe in, it goes up here. Then you have the EPAP, which is expiratory positive airway pressure, which goes down when you exhale. And this helps people with like COPD um, or congestive heart failure. Um, it provides energy for you to breathe. It helps you get off, blow off the CO2. I'm not gonna get too into this, but it helps you blow off the CO2 to help get you out of that central apnea cycle. So that's BiPAP. Then you have people who have um, uh, much more severe uh, sleep apnea. It's, uh, you have a mixture of mixed apneas, obstructive apneas, central apneas, chain stokes respiration. And I'll, I'll get into this a little bit, but um, in, in general, you have this waxing and waning, uh, your, your breathing's all over the place. And so you need a much more sophisticated machine and that's where the auto servo ventilation comes in. Uh, it senses what you need breath to breath and it's gonna make the changes accordingly. Now, how awesome is this? What can possibly go wrong? Uh, a lot can go wrong because uh, there's a lot of people that don't know how to set it up right. Um, and there's basically a pressure you set it up. It's like Ron Popeil, set it and forget it. That was a bad accent. I think he was more like, yeah, I don't know. He, he was different. So you wanna have these settings, they're important. Um, and there's uh, six of them, six settings, count them. So what you have is, this is what the settings should be, and I'm gonna go over some examples. You should have the IPAP max. This is the max pressure it goes set to 25. This is 25 centimeters of water pressure. Yeah, that sounds like a lot. Does it always go there? Nope. You just wanna give it the option to go that high if it needs to. Um, you also have the EPAP max. You want that set up to 15. That's the, as high as it goes. You don't wanna limit the machine at all. You wanna let it, that lower pressure, go as high as it needs to go. Then you have the EPAP min. This is as low as the EPAP can go. This is the one that you can have a little wiggle room on. Um, four is an acceptable setting, but six is usually a better setting. Now, EPAP is usually what you need to resolve central apneas. So, so you want that EPAP to have a nice big area that it can move. So you get EPAP max at 15, EPAP min at four or six, and it gives it all this area to play in here. And then it can, with the IPAP, go all the way up to here. Whoop, 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 whoop. See? All right, then you have some other settings called pressure support. Uh, pressure support is a big fancy way of saying the difference between the IPAP and the difference between the EPAP. So let's use some big math here, folks. If the IPAP is 14 and the EPAP is 10, then your pressure support is four. IPAP 16, EPAP 10, pressure support six. So with this setting, again, you don't wanna hamper it at all, but yet you do wanna keep a little bit of wiggle room. You, you wanna keep a difference between the IPAP and the EPAP. So for um, pressure support min, you wanna have four, Pressure support max, it's gonna be 19 because that's gonna be the difference. It'll, it'll be 19 or 21 depending on what your EPAP min is. Um, anyway, this gives it a great range. So if for some reason you need IPAP all the way up to 25, but yet you know, you're, you're having central apneas at like five or six, you want it to be able to go down as low as it needs to and as up as high as it needs to. Any difference from this and you're gonna be greatly uh, throttled. Throt you're gonna be limiting the capabilities of the IPAP. So let's get into some uh, demonstrations and I have an actual example from my forum who had this exact problem. So here is the post. Uh, this is by a gentleman uh, who said, I've been on ASV for approximately three months now. Um, average below 5.9 and all of a sudden it's rising up to 65. This is AHI. No mass leaks and always the same AHI level. 
<clears throat> so let's see here is an excellent example of it and if we zoom in we can take a look at the settings so what was happening is you can see this uh, this is you can see uh, most of these are clear airway which is kind of like their way of saying central apnea but you can really see here this waxing and waning pattern that goes on the entire night um, this green shaded area is um, denotes uh, chain stokes respiration or a periodic breathing. So this is happening with this poor guy. So now if you look at the settings, you see that the EPAP min is 10, IPAP max is at 21. So if you remember what I was saying, they've already greatly um, reduced the effectiveness of CPAP, I'm sorry, of ASV. And also here, pressure support 4.5 to 9.5 so they are really just reining this thing in they have this you know it's like having a sports car and putting a governor on it so that instead of being able to go 200 miles an hour it can go 55 um, they're really limiting what this thing can do and at this guy's detriment hold on what I pop in right here what are your pressure settings da 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 da, -da. And I basically say, yeah, you, that kind of sucks. And he goes, all right, well, let me change it up. And I say, sweet. And so here's the first night. You can see the improvement is much better. It's tagging some hypopneas, which who knows. These periods here are probably a little poor, but these areas here are much better and here are much better. But you can see the HI dropped from 65 down to 2.3, um, just with the appropriate settings. And then he's like, far better, looks great. So he has a bunch of pros anyway. He's, it's all good. So what exactly was happening here? Well, his settings, first of all, ASV works like this. So here's his breathing. It's kind of doing that waxing and waning thing. And so what this is his, let's see, we'll call it real. Oh, dude, I'm off the screen. That's lame. This is his real breathing. And this is what ASV does during these periods. And so during this part, like right here, because it's real shallow. Actually, I'll start here. So right here, it's not moving. So the ASV isn't doing much because he's kind of breathing on his own. But then here as he starts to decrease, it increases during the times where he's breathing decreases. And it decreases when his breathing increases. Boy, this is a crap drawing. Holy smokes. Anyway, what it does is it takes the sum total. Total. And um, basically, it adds these two together. And so what his breathing looks like at the proper settings is that. Woohoo! That's how ASV works. Nothing crazy. Just the way it does it. So what his settings were is he had, he had IPAP at, uh, you know what, I'm going to look. Okay, he had 21 for this. EPAP min was, anyway, EPAP min is way too goddamn high. So EPAP min was 10, pressure support min, we're just going to call it 5, I'm actually rounding up, and PS max, remember this is a difference between the two pressures, was 9. That is not a lot of friggin' play, buddy boy. So what it's, this is doing is it's severely hampering the ability of his machine to make the proper adjustments. I have no idea what the EPAP max was. But anyway, so what this is doing, uh, if the EPAP min is 10 and the pressure for the maximum amount that the pressure support can be changed, the difference, look, there's already as the min here. Uh, let's see. God, how do I illustrate this the best? You can see here, with the IPAP max of 21 and the EPAP min of 10, pressure support max, this is the maximum amount of difference between the two of these. This one here that can only go up by two because that'll make a difference of nine between the two, right? But this is the max pressure support, and this is assuming he's on IPAP of 21. So this is either keeping the auto SV pressures artificially low or it's forcing them to be artificially high just because the pressure support min is so um, is so tight. And again, I don't know what the EPAP max is, which is why I'm having a hard time uh, fully grasping the um, how it's all related. Um, 
but you can see that this isn't able to decrease any more than 10. This is already too high. Um, a lot of people will have central apneas at 10. It's just the way it is, especially someone who's sensitive to it and has already been determined to need auto SV. So having the EPAP min being so high is going to force the IPAP maximum to be high. And, uh, you know, we got what we got. So when we adjusted the settings with uh, this gentleman, what was able to occur is the ASV had free range to go, you know, have the EPAP as low as here and the EPAP max in this range and the IPAP could go from this to here, which gives it all this, you know, <laughs> all this space to make its move versus before he had this kind of tight range where everything was sort of stuck together and it really just uh, had to do all its movements in that area versus really being able to make some large movements. Remember, ASV is breath to breath. If you're going to be hampering it um, and, and limiting what it can do breath to breath, you're going to have some major problems. Um, so hopefully this kind of brings to light uh, what exactly is going on with ASV and why the uh, settings really need to be left open as open as they can and let it just do the work that it was intended to do. All right, hopefully that helped. Maybe you saw exactly, maybe you're in the same situation. Um, sometimes people think that once they get on a, uh, an ASV, it's gonna be solve the world's problems. Well, you still have problems, potential problems with mask leaking, um, and then you have the potential problem of the pressure not being set appropriately. Um, once you get these resolved, these machines are quite sophisticated and they will take care of you quite well. Again, my name is Jason. If you haven't joined my forum, freecpapadvice.com forward slash forum. You can check out my website too. It's freecpapadvice.com. Please join my forum and subscribe to my channel. I need